Thank you very much, uh, dear guests, uh, dear organizers. Uh, thanks a lot. My name is Stanis Bamidis. I'm uh, the director of the Lab of Medical Physics and the Digital Innovation in uh, the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, the School of Medicine. And uh, we participate uh, in this uh, project uh, for which this webinar is uh, called. Uh, RACE is the project that uh, provides the infrastructure that uh, we hope that it will facilitate a decentralized uh, system for processing data uh, based on the uh, concept of crowdsourcing. Uh, this basically involves a transition from uh, what is usually called uh, uh, classical processing, I would say, uh, into something more uh, uh, innovative, into something that uh, will utilize open data that enable open access uh, for processing. And instead of sending the data to the algorithm, we uh, appreciate that in a race we'll develop uh, uh, the facility to enable the algorithm to be sent to the data set so that things could be done in a better way. So what we hope to uh, be doing in this workshop today in the limited time that we have is that uh, we will introduce all participants to an initial mock-up of uh, uh, what we are hoping to become a system in, uh, in the race. Uh, and uh, we'll show how this will be done, actually, how the processing algorithm, uh, usually small in size, will be directly sent into the data set, which is usually large in size. Uh, so we avoid a lot of trafficking, but also we are safeguarding what we are hoping to be done uh, with our data when we have them open in the system. So the current mock-up will be an interactive version that demonstrates uh, some basic functionalities of the system. It will uh, allow the demonstration of what we have uh, named as a research analysis identifier system. And uh, through this uh, navigation, we will demonstrate uh, to you, the participants, all so the basic features so that you can better understand the system and provide uh, perhaps uh, some valuable insights into how we could possibly improve user experience. I don't want to talk uh, long. I just want to uh, say how important this is. This is the, this is the first public interaction uh, with its users uh, in the mock-up system, as I mentioned. But the goal is to, for all of us, in fact, to appreciate the value of not uh, uh, you know, transferring data around, but uh, not only accessing ac accessing uh, data, but uh, just doing uh, what is minimally uh, required and uh, which is more secure uh, in the sense of protecting the IPs of uh, those people that have collected the data, as well as of uh, those people that have uh, um, created and uh, developed the algorithms. So. Hopefully, this uh, whole mock-up presentation will be followed up by a discussion in which you can uh, share your experiences, you can make suggestions, you can do all the brainstorming that is possibly achievable in such a short time frame. Uh, well, I'd like to stop here and I'd like to thank you in advance for your participation and I hope we have a fruitful uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bamidis. Let me pass the floor to Dr. Evdokimos Kostandernidis now. He will talk about open science and the RACE project. Dr. Kostandernidis. I want to make sure that you can see my screen. Yes, yeah, so all good. Thank you, Evdokimos. Oh, okay, just one moment. But now it's okay now. Can you see the, the, the full uh, slide? Yes. Yes, it's all good. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Following uh, Pano's uh, introduction, I will, I will go um, a bit uh, deeper to the details of what Pano's uh, described. Uh, he, he gave us the vision, actually, and what we want to achieve, but there are intermediate steps that we have to, and milestones that we have to achieve. First of all, I, I'm sure that all of us are aware of the value of open data. 
which is actually increasing transparency and accountability, improving decision making, increasing innovation and uh, efficiency, but also economic growth and uh, improvement in public uh, services and department of uh, citizens. So before entering the details, I would like uh, all of us to ask ourselves how many of us we believe in the value of the open data. And let me uh, answer on behalf of all of us that we do believe in the value of open data. And so this is why we are here. And this is why the, uh, we have this uh, webinar. But how many of us look for available open data before we start collecting our own for, uh, for a study? If I speak for myself, I would say that I always do that, but not as a first step. In the beginning, I'm trying to understand how I should collect data, and then I say, but no, there is the, the open data community. Let's see if there is anything there. How many of us collect data, collect the data in the last five years? I'm sure that many, many of us. And how many of us made this data open and available? I know the answer, but is it only us? No, because actually researchers, they feel uh, more secure. They feel uh, happy to, to store their data, not open the data, but to store them in personal physical data storage or institutional local storages or in the cloud of the institution. And they prefer to share their data mainly with researchers working the same project. And this is sometimes due to the obligations uh, that come from uh, the funding uh, uh, mechanisms or with researchers that they don't work in the same project, but they do know personally. So you see that there is a culture of not sharing the data in a way that it would be beneficial for, uh, beneficial for everyone. So the obstacles, uh, for uh, opening data, research data are um, some of the times lack of data repositories or the complexity of uh, using the data repository, the fear of commercial uh, someone commercializing our data or uh, analysis that came that uh, happened on our data, lack of recognition. So someone uses your data, they do publication, but they never acknowledge your contribution. The time and effort required not only for collecting or preparing for collecting the data, but also for making avail uh, openly available, which means that you might need to transform it. You might need to learn how the repository work. You might need to learn the how the metadata work and also to, to create the metadata. So this also implies the skills needed for something like this. The financial cost, because some of the time since we all understand that opening the data takes some time. It might be that you have to decide whether you move on your uh, study or you stop your study and you start uh, you investing time and uh, money resources actually in opening your data. Legal restrictions like sensitive or personal data, especially in the health domain that most of us come from, it's uh, difficult. Uh, which is which is come from the also from the data protection the the GDPR. So who should who should change? Should it be us, the researchers, trying to impose ourselves to follow uh, what the open data needs, or should it be the mechanisms for open data adapt to our fears, to the researchers' fears and our uh, culture? If I had to answer as I would say that both sides need to make some small steps in order to find the, the goal point. And this is actually what Ray's project does, where uh, a consortium of 20 partners, of which half of uh, half of which uh, are um, technical partners. So we have three years more and five million in order to materialize part of our vision to have an open, fair, and uh, reliable research community where every researcher will be accredited for their work and all research data will be equally accessible for processing without violating data protection and regulations. So the mission of our project is to move, as Panos mentioned earlier, from open data to data open for processing because we do believe that the value of the data is not in owning them, but in processing them. But how it works, I will briefly explain and then I will end there step by step uh, with brief explanations for all these uh, steps. Actually, the idea is that 
when we have a data set, we don't have to upload it to an, uh, an existing or repository or an open, an open repository, but we have to register as available for processing. And then other researchers, external researchers, can send their algorithm, the script, to the place where the data set is, and then to get the results. Let's see uh, step by step. So as I said, researchers can make their data available for processing by uploading their data on their own or any other RAY certified node. And RAY certified node, it is, it is a server of a trustworthy crowdsource network offering data storing and processing resources. It could be an organization's uh, cloud server, it could be a small labs uh, server, it could be our own uh, computer at home. And then any researcher can look for data sets that meet their needs based on the metadata. And then they can find and access data sets or existing results from previous processing algorithms that run on the data set. Once they find the data set, they can either download a sample, a small, a small scale data set, a sum, or a synthetic data coming from the uh, source of data set in order to prepare the, the algorithm, in order to make sure that they can um, process the, they, they follow the format of the data set and they process it. Once they do this, they then can upload the script or the algorithm to the place where the data set is, to the RAI node, to your personal computer. And there the, the, the script is executed. The results of the execution are registered to a blockchain network along with the data set, the owner, any, any metadata of the data set, like the owner of the data set, the, the results, but also, if possible, the, the algorithm or the script. And this registration um, gives the research analysis identified, which is a percent, persistent identifier. Then we can publish the results by publishing this research analysis identifier number because anyone with this RAI number can find the results, but also who was the owner of the data set, what, which was uh, the, uh, the algorithm or the script. And then the researcher having this number can validate the results through the RAI system. So it's like, uh, I'm sure that all of you are, are uh, familiar with the uh, digital objects identifier, the DOI number, where you can put the DOI uh, ID and then you get all the information of the publication. Similarly here, you can add the RAI ID and then you get all the information of the experiment or actually all the information that is the, the, um, uh, the owner of the experiment allowed to be uh, publicly available. And by this, I mean that the data set is always available, but the script or the algorithm might be proprietary, so not open, or it could be open to everyone. Because we want, as you understood, to uh, eliminate the fears of the researchers in opening the data, but we don't want to block appropriate companies from commercializing their own algorithms. And then since we have the script, an existing script can be applied also to other data sets, to different data sets, or even to find similar data sets. And in order to create a, a group, a big group of small data sets where we can apply the, the, the algorithm. And of course, as we said before, then we can get the red results. And these results can be set and processed and physically by the research community. So what we offer, we have in our university, at the University of Thessaloniki, we have uh, the infrastructure for providing the main, the central hub services, because every request goes to the central hub and then it is addressed to the corresponding uh, processing node, right node. We provide to the researchers community services like synthetic data generation, data curation, preservation, data versioning, the plagiarism checker, many different uh, services. And also for the beneficiaries, the data providers and data processors, we provide, we try to make their life easier by providing the corresponding APIs, SDKs, and uh, other tools in order to make sure that such a system, such a complex system, can be easily used by the research community. 
the application domains in order to experiment with uh, with the right system during the life cycle of the project are in health, in mobility, in environment. But we try also to have a cross disciplinary study where we try in Thessaloniki actually to make use of the data of health, mobility, and environment data in order to uh, come up with insights for the city. As I said in the beginning, we are a technical consortium mainly. 11 out of the 20 partners are technical partners. And uh, a high TRL is expected at the end of the project in order to be ready to be used by the EOSC and the research community. That's all from my side. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Evokimos. Now, this Petzani will present the initial uh, mock-up of Grace's uh, approach, uh, which is an interactive uh, version that demonstrates the basic functionalities of the research analysis identifier system. Despina, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Eleni. I'll share my screen. I hope that you can see it properly. Oh, you good, Despina. Thank you. Good, thank you. And apologies because I have two screens, so I will be looking at both at some time. Uh, so the, this session uh, is about uh, the scientific community engagement and how we envisage this to happen in race. Uh, and of course, we wanted to be an interactive session because as Pano said, uh, we want race to gather feedback from all the community in order to create something that is useful for them. So uh, we talk a lot about open data, open science, open software, what the ELF does, what are the skills that are needed, uh, citizen science, all these um, themes and ideas that are very central for the research community, but who is in the center of all that and who benefits from all this? Uh, who is the one that will take advantage of open science tool, open data? For us and I hope for you, the answer is the researcher, the scientist. So this is whom we try to put at the center uh, of the whole design process uh, in race. As you might have heard, of course, uh, there is a popular saying that if you have asked people some years ago uh, what they would like to move, they would ask for a faster horse. So, of course, we should have a, a central idea in which we will bid upon and we are not asking people what we will do. So we have the central system uh, and idea of race that the documents presented, but we want to build them in a way that the researcher and the scientist can use. So we want to start from what we need and not from what the data or the software or the innovation needs. So we are, uh, we want to sacrifice and we must sacrifice technology innovation in order to create uh, value for the end user. Uh, there is no need to creating something that might be very innovative, but no one will use. So we have a whole uh, work package dedicated uh, in race that is monitoring and assessing this. And uh, this webinar is the first of a series of interactions with the community that aims to gather this feedback to show what we have to the community and experiment on how they can use it, what they can get back and how we can improve the system. So we want the system that uh, addresses the concerns that we have and not create new problems on how we will store data, how we will access data, how we will process data. And we try to build on the current culture. So we try to experiment on what is currently happening, how people are currently sharing their data and uh, analyzing their data in order to provide something that will not disrupt their everyday work, 
but actually build on top of them and uh, add tools in uh, their toolkits. Uh, we want the system that is intuitive, easy to use, and of course, useful. So uh, we want your views and uh, as we move on, uh, we will have a more interactive version in which you can see and you can experiment uh, with the very first version of, of the system. Uh, and to do all that, we have a methodology that has several steps of releases of the race uh, system. And for each release, we want the community that is being created. So we hope that uh, you as part of this uh, first webinar are part of this community that is being created and uh, will follow the releases of the system and provide your feedback as we continue. So the first, we are now at the first release, uh, which demonstrates simple data upload and data finding functionality, which you will see in a bit, uh, with simple mockups um, that are interactive up to a point, of course, because they are still mockups. Uh, then moving on to the next step, uh, we would like to provide the functionality of preparing and analyzing a script, the scripts that will be sent to the datasets for analysis. So this functionality is the next step to be uh, designed and delivered to the end users. Then we have the remote processing and registering uh, experiments. So how you can process the data remotely and how you can register the experiments to get that persistent ID that the document talked about that will be uh, similar to DOI, but for your experiment and data set. And that will preserve uh, the work that you have done for collecting the data, but also for analyzing. Then uh, we want to move on on getting the register results and being able to publish the results because in a, a community of open science, we don't only want to uh, share and make available our data, but we want to share also the analysis that we will do so that uh, anyone can benefit, can build on top of that, and move the science uh, and scientific evidence further. So we want the register results, the, the results that have this persistent ID to become available and uh, to become published for others to check and build on top of that. So this uh, pinkish lines build the whole uh, system of race and then we move to uh, another version, these blue ones, that uh, add more functionalities on the basic system that we have. So we want to offer popular dataset preservation, uh, popular datasets from out there, but also from inside the system, uh, datasets that are being processed a lot uh, to get a specific uh, preservation and mention. We want also uh, a researcher to be able to enhance a processing script because uh, in the previous version and right now we can only upload new scripts, but we want to move uh, to a point that you can enhance your, your scripts and that you can uh, make changes in order uh, to improve your experiments. Uh, deployment of new nodes, as nodes, we call the local storing uh, systems that will be installed in various places across Europe uh, during race. And of course, we want this to continue also after the project with uh, new deployment of storing. So we want to create, our vision is to create a crowds, crowdsource storing of data uh, so that uh, you can have uh, the infrastructure that you need for storing your data and then easily send your scripts with data for analysis. And then of course, after gathering all this feedback, 
we want to create a final improvement during the project lifetime. So after each of this step, we will have interactions with the race community, either via webinars or uh, with questionnaires, with uh, maybe one-to-one uh, -one interactions or other ways of uh, adding comments directly to the system uh, in order to gather requirements and progress on what we want to do. So I think that uh, I've talked enough. So uh, it's time to for you to also start uh, telling us your opinion and what you think. Uh, I hope that you're all familiar with Menti. Uh, if not, it's not something difficult. Uh, so if you are on your computers or on your phones, please open a new browser uh, and go to menti.com and add this code. Or if you don't want to do that, you can simply scan this QR code that you have in your screen now with your uh, phone's camera. Or there is a third option, you can get the link from the chat that my colleague Eleni will kindly share with you uh, so that you can uh, enter. So uh, leave the QR code just a bit more for people to join. And the code is 11435592. For those that want to enter with code. Okay, good. You have already started answering. <laughs> uh, okay, just wait a minute. You you just enter uh, now. So there are only two people uh, entered. So please, the rest, uh, go to mendy.com and write this code it will ask for a code i can show it to you here if you go to menti.com it will ask for a code and you will enter one one four three five five nine two so Anyone else that would like to join? Only four out of 47? If you have any difficulties, please unmute uh, uh, yourself and let me know. And do not answer yet. Just This is just to end it. people seven do not answer yet uh, i have something to show you first just please uh, do this and enter yes test is working so for the rest of the day. okay eight people ten okay does anyone want to ask something uh, for how to end it or do you manage to do it? Okay, so please the rest uh, uh, end there. We would like to hear your views, so uh, let me go back a bit. I hope that you still can see my screen. The first uh, mock up and the first flow that we have is for the data consumer, the researcher that wants to enter it into the system 
uh, in order to find data sets and analyze them and get the results back. So I am a researcher, I have a research problem and I need some data to answer my research question. Uh, what that person can do, can uh, go, uh, if you have an account, you can just log in, if not, you should uh, uh, click create an account, so that you mountain that we have an account, and we end up. And here is my board. And, uh, in my board, what we are seeing in this that you can see is uh, my data set my scripts and my experiments. My datasets is the data that I have choose to process. My scripts are the, the scripts, the programming scripts that I want to upload in order to process the data. And my experiments are the actual running of the scripts in the data that I have chosen. So this is what we uh, are processing for a board. And that's where the first uh, question goes. So what would you like to see in your main board? Is that enough? Would you like to see something more, something less? So now, please answer to your uh, mandate that you have under what you would like to see in this. Uh, the people that are entering the, the code you are already registered, so you, there's no need to enter the code again, just enter your answer. And also, if you are having trouble with that, you can just un unmute your, your mic and tell us what do you think should be included in this board. So I see here the available stuff. So that is available in metadata. Okay, metadata description, clustering of data categories. Okay. Origin of data sets. Okay. So uh the what do you if you want to speak, what do, do you mean by origins of data sets? I don't know who wrote that. No. Where, who, and which experiment? Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is the general view, and uh, there are some nice ideas about uh, metadata that is available uh, where and who. But let's see if we cover that. So if you go to my data set, you can see the data, all the data sets that you have saved for using, the ones that are your favorite, the ones that have been used already, uh, the ones that are unused and the ones that you currently have no access. So if we go to a data set, uh, here you can see a general description, some details that are the metadata of this data set, the files, uh, so you see, here is a CSV for example, and which similar data sets uh, you can find in RAID. So here goes the next question. What information you would like to have for its data set? Uh, is it enough what we have thought of? Do you want to have more? What's your ideas? Do you, have to have, do you like to have something different? So if you go back to your, your Mandy, you can answer, or you can even uh, just speak out or write it in the chat is okay for us.
data space type of or category. So do you want to comment more on what you mean type? Uh, do you mean the if they are CSV, if they are uh, JSON or so, or do you mean the domain? Sort data by category. So what do we mean by category? What would you expect to see as categories? Okay, what is the different? So the uh, how the data what the, the data really are. Okay. And would you like to see also categories of uh, the domain? So, for example, health related data, um, I don't know, mobility related data, environmental data, would that be also useful? Would you expect something like that? Or Feel free also to write it uh, in the chat or just open your mic and talk. Subdomain, okay. So any other responses? Publications. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. So you can think uh, of whatever more you want uh, to add. Descriptive statistics. So these are the ones that you have uh, chosen to work with, let's say. But there is also the dataset marketplace in which, as you can see, we have category, we have data format, we have date, and we have uh, the lab. Um, so which node as we call it this is uh, located and we have a search string as well in which you can write words and here you can see all the uh, data sets that are uh, available and you can for example choose one and uh, either save or request access so if you uh, request access, uh, you will send the request. There are some data sets that are available instantly, but some you need to request access. And then uh, when you have access, you can go back to your data sets and you can find the ones that you uh, have access already, but the ones also that access is pending. So here you will need an approval uh, from the lab that this uh, this data is coming. And uh, let me see if we have more. Uh, okay, geographical cover. Okay, so where the, the data are coming from or geographical coverage of the actual information of the data set. So please, if uh, the one that under that, please. Clarify metadata, data protocol fabrication. Okay, preview of the data. That's very interesting. Okay, so we have seen more or less how is uh, how you can locate data, how you can uh, request access, uh, and how you can uh, store or save your data sets. 
for further use. Let's see uh, how how my scripts are uh, structured. My scripts are the scripts that I create in order to process a data set that I have stored in my data sets. And you have several scripts and you have also the status. So have you tested, have you already run uh, that script on your data set or not? And if it's a big process that is time consuming, it might, the status might be running because it's um, continuously running on the data set and didn't produce results yet. So here uh, you can see also uh, the script information, so the script that you have uploaded and uh, the requirements that you have uploaded, so some information uh, about the script. And we can go to the next question, which is what information you would like to have for your script? What would you like to see more? If you don't want, if you're okay with that, you can also write nothing, but please feel free to propose uh, something more that can help you when uh, you have a script and you want to run it on a specific date. So what you will see there. requirements so uh, do you mean the requirement text the txt uh, if you could please write some more info or if you want to share with us uh, what you think what you have in mind okay that's interesting so what's the programming language that the script is uploaded to it can also be taken by uh, the extension but that's important thank you so any other thoughts from Anyone? Please also unmute yourselves and speak. You, you can keep your cameras closed if you want. Okay, so you want to ask uh, can me? I make a question? I'm um, Tassos from Innovax. Uh, if, uh, 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 how it's possible to create the scripts concerning a special data set? Do we have a, a clue how is data organized? Or there is sample scripts uh, where you can understand uh, how to use the data? Uh, yes, yeah, that's a very uh, good question. You actually uh, can. Uh, it's available in the uh, mockup, but here you, you can download the sample. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, because this is the mockup data, I, the sample will not be downloaded. So you can download the sample, make some uh, experiments like locally uh, with the script, and then when your whole script is uh, ready, Upload and run it to the whole data set. Okay. Was that your question? No, oh, okay, it was clear. Uh, but but uh, on the same manner that uh, you provide some, um, I think it's a good idea to have also a sample script. It will help us uh, uh, also. Maybe. Uh, you know, a full uh, with uh, the full data. I mean, uh, 
the full uh, data set, a sample script, in order to, it will be faster for us to make uh, a test, meaning that we'll use the data uh, that uh, we need from the fields in order to understand uh, also. Well, that's a good, very good idea. And this way, if I can intervene, Deskna, and this is why we also would like uh, general researchers that uh, use the data and they go through, you know, the very first time that they use the data set. If they make their script available to the community so they don't care about protecting it and may, they are okay with disclosing it, then other researchers can use it as, a, as an example in order to see, you know, the, the external researcher, the, 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 ex, uh, the, the other external researchers, how to read the data. And maybe also if another uh, researcher has already implemented a filter, let's say, for a data set, then you can use it in your experiment and then you move on with your own uh, algorithm. Yeah, exactly. And also uh, uh, to add something on the, what the document said, actually, you may have uh, 10 data sets from health, let's say, but uh, you lose a lot of time in order to see which one is best for you. So if you have an example uh, uh, of uh, it will help you to gain some time and say, say OK, this is better for me. Uh, Okay, uh, based on uh, what uh, we discussed. Yeah, no, that's a very good idea. Thank you. And uh, let's continue some more. Uh, so this is how you upload your new script. Uh, that is the name and uh, a, a URL uh, option, or there is a file option that you can file uh, the file from your computer. And of course, uh, if you click upload, uh, you have the new script and you can go back and you see the new script uploaded uh, in your scripts. And you can use that script so the status is untested. So you can constantly update new scripts to run a new experiments. And uh, so we have another question. Uh, if you have any comments for the script up update, uh, how do you find it? Do you find it uh, cumbersome to use, so uploading, uh, or if it's okay for you, how would you, uh, what would you propose for um, improvements? How would you do it differently? So I, I leave this question open for your comments. Can you refer to older versions of scripts? Uh, actually, uh, right now that is not available, but we hope to deliver it uh, in the enhanced okay. here uh, in the enhanced processing script. Uh, functionalities that we will add as we continue. So uh, this is an ongoing process that we want to improve, but this is uh, a very good idea that you can revert to older versions if you have done a mistake uh, or you just want to change something. So please uh, brainstorm on what we can do to improve this functionality. And I will show you some more. Uh, the last is my experiment. So an experiment is a data set and a script. And uh, you can see here, I have script one in data set one and the experiment is running because the data set is huge. So uh, I have 58%. Uh, and I have another one, for example, that is script one in data set one that is completed. I have the results that I can download, the results that my script has produced. And also there are the ones that have produced some errors. So if this is finalized, 
it might result in something completed, but it also might result in an error that uh, has stopped the process. So you will get also the error messages that were returned. And uh, also you have added some comments on uh, how we can have the script and the data set uh, combined uh, the, in the view, but how do you see uh, that run experiment functionality? Do you find it easy or uh, do you have uh, any comments? I will leave that question running uh, as I show you some uh, more flows that we have. Uh, so you can also access if you are an unregistered user and we want to have that option uh, for being more open. And if you access as an unregistered, of course, you will not have my board, you will not have script and data that you can have access or experiments. This is only for users that are registered, but you will have access to the data set marketplace and from there you will be able to see what uh, its data set has and also download the sample and as uh, proposed we can also have uh, not only a data set sample but also a code sample in different codes that you can download and you can see also the details of the data category type etc and a description that has been provided so that someone can see first what is there and then decide uh, if he or she wants to register to get access. And uh, last is about the data provider. So if I have a data set that I want to make available for the research community uh, to use. So again, you log in uh, and then uh, in my data sets you can click upload new data set you have to write a name on uh, data set this and a description the one that is um, uh, being uh, present in the market marketplace and also all the information that we request so we with the author, contributors, license, uh, category, so all the information that you have seen in the marketplace. Uh, and here, these are mandatory information. Uh, we need some uh, to select actually to which node you will store your data. So the data sets are stored in the local places that RAISE provides for storing and uh, these are located in different areas and in order to give that crowdsourced uh, opportunity of the space and infrastructure so you can choose a node, you can choose all the options and uh, that you will get a message that the dataset is uploaded and you go to your datasets and you can see the data yeah, that you have uploaded and uh, from here you can also have the status how much this is used uh, if it's popular so uh, if it's popular you get more credits and you will also be mentioned through this persistent identifier for the data that you have um, offered um, and so this is also a question about the data set upload functionality. And we would like very quickly, please, those of you that have uh, disconnected from the Mendy, please enter again. And this is a final uh, question that uh, we would like you to ask. So please go to mendy.com, use this code and the answer from strongly disagree to strongly agree uh, 
with the current version that you see and as honestly as you can, uh, if you believe that will, this system will be easy to use, uh, if you find that functionality is useful, if you imagine that people will use it uh, quickly, and if you think that you will actually use. So these are three very simple questions. Please enter into Mendy and answer as honestly as possible. We want to improve that. We don't want it to be uh, something that you will not use. There is no need to, uh, to build something like that. So this is very important for us. And uh, with that, uh, I will conclude uh, my presentation and this webinar. And I will also ask you to get involved in this uh, uh, process that we are doing in this attempt that uh, we do to create a system that will help us analyze uh, data and find the available data sets. Uh, and you can go to the link that is placed in the chat and uh, sign to our community in order to help us uh, make the system better. That is all from me. We have one minute, so any comments? Thank you very much, uh, Despina. We have only one minute. Thank you everyone for your valuable input. Uh, please feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions for the little time that is uh, remaining or use the chat uh, function. So perhaps we can uh, close this webinar. And uh, thanks very much, everyone, for participating. We will be following up with uh, with all of you to share the recording and uh, the slides and also some ways for you to get more actively involved. And we hope to see you at another Ray Science event. Many thanks also to our presenters. <laughs>